According to the Honor Based Violence Awareness, HBVAN, honor killings are committed within families or social groups with the purpose of controlling behavior. Such murders are carried in the name of protecting cultural beliefs or honor, and those targeted are believed to have shamed their family or community. Reasons given for this can include refusing an arranged marriage, entering a relationship with someone disapproved of, renouncing faith, and behaving or dressing in a way that is thought to be inappropriate. Both men and women can be victims of honour killings, although women can be more commonly targeted. Some recent examples of honour killings. Shafili Ahmed was born on 14th of July 1986 in Bradford, West Yorkshire. She was the daughter of Pakistani immigrant parents. The family lived in Warrington, Cheshire. She was an A-level student and hoped to become a solicitor. During a trip to Pakistan in early 2003, Shafili had swallowed bleach in what was reported to be a suicide attempt. Her parents claimed this had been a simple mistake and that she had drunk the bleach during a power cut because she thought it was mouthwash. Shafili suffered extensive damage to her throat for which she was having regular ongoing care at the time of her disappearance. She had apparently turned down a suitor in a forced marriage during the trip, although her parents denied there may be any attempts made to pressure her into agreeing to the prospective marriage. She disappeared on 11th of September 2003. She had been missing for a week before her teachers informed the police. In February 2004, her dismembered remains were found after heavy flooding in a river in Kent. 70 miles away from Warrington. Police said the corpse was deliberately hidden and a gold zigzag bracelet and blue topaz ring was found with the body. Due to advanced decomposition of her remains, the cause of death could not be determined by the coroner. Her parents, 51-year-old taxi driver Iftikhar Ahmed and 48-year-old housewife Farzana Ahmed, were released without charge after having briefly been arrested along with five other members of their extended family. Police noted that Shafilia probably felt trapped. She was in an emotional state and described as her life to be hopeless. She had even run away from her house several times. Her mum would often swear at her because she dyed her hair or wore false nails. In January 2008, the coroner's inquest held that she was a victim of a very vile murder, having been taken from her home on Liverpool Road in Warrington. The verdict was unlawful killing. Her family left the inquest without making any comment. After the inquest, her family attempted unsuccessfully to have the verdict of unlawful killing overturned and replaced by an open verdict. Shafilia's younger sister Alicia arranged the robbery that took place at her parents' house on the 25th of August 2010. She was arrested and she told the police that her parents had killed Shafilia. They tried to force Shafili to accept the arranged marriage. Her parents were afraid her refusal would bring shame on the family. Her father put a plastic bag in her mouth and suffocated her to death. On the 7th of September 2011, it was announced that Shafilia's parents had been charged with her murder. The trial found them guilty. They received a minimum term of 25 years. Tule Gorin, 15. During the school holidays of 1998, Tule took out a summer job at a clothing factory in Hackney, London, where she met and then embarked on a relationship with Halil Onal. Onal was also a Turkish Kurd, but was 15 years older than Tule and was from the Sunni branch of Islam. Her family didn't approve and she was ordered to end the relationship. After her summer job at the factory ended, the couple maintained daily telephone contact. On December 10th, 1998, Mehmet Goren went to Onal's place of work, assaulted him and warned him to stop bothering his daughter. Onal reported the assault but didn't press charges. On the same day, Tule's family took her to the local police station and reported Onal for pestering her. On 14th December 1998, Tule ran away from home and went to live with Onal. After initially reporting her missing and reporting Onal, as Tule was 15, the family changed track and agreed that the pair should get married. A ceremony was scheduled for 21st of December at Hackney Register Office. Despite Mehmet's 
To bribe the registrar, the ceremony did not go ahead as Tule, age 15, was underage. A new date was set for 8th of March 1999. The couple continued living together until 6th of January 1999, when Tule's father claimed he objected her to sharing a home with Anal's male flatmate forced her to return to the family home. He told Onal that she'd remain at home until he'd found somewhere suitable for the two of them to live. Having forced Tule to return home on 6th of January, her father beat her, tied her up and drugged her with sleeping tablets. The following day, he sent his wife and other children to stay with his brother overnight, telling her that he and Tule had things to talk about. It is not known how she died, but police believe she was either smothered or strangled and then buried temporarily in their back garden, before being moved to an unknown location. When Hanim Gorin returned to the family home following her overnight stay at the home of her brother-in-law, her husband told her that Tule had run away. Having already murdered his daughter on 20th of January 1999, Mehmet Gorin arranged to meet Onal to discuss his and Tule's future. Having lured him to the meeting, he attacked Onal with an axe. In the intervening period between Tule's disappearance and the later murder trial, Mehmed Gorin was convicted of grievous bodily harm for the axe attack. On January 22, 1999, Unald reported Tule missing. After initially corroborating with her husband's story and maintaining that Tule had run away, Hanim Gorin was arrested on suspicion for perverting the course of justice and murder. She admitted that she hadn't seen what had happened but believed that Mehmed had killed her. In October 2009, Mehmet was found guilty and charged with a minimum of 22 years. Surjit Athwal was a British Indian woman born on 17th July 1971 in Coventry. At the age of 16, she was compelled to marry a man 10 years her senior, Sukhdev Singh Athwal, the son of 70-year-old Bachchan Kaur Athwal, who her daughter-in-law later described as the matriarch of the family. She barely knew the man that she married, as she had only met him once before. Being a new member of the family, Surjit tried by all means to adjust, but struggled with some of the rules. She described them as too harsh and unreasonable compared to where she was coming from. Faced with this dilemma, she made an effort to discuss the challenges with her husband and her mother-in-law, but her plea fell on deaf ears. Left with no other choice in changing the course of things, Surjit was forced to rebel. This didn't go well with her husband, who felt she was forcefully challenging his authority as a man of the house, which, according to him, was a taboo in their Sikh tradition, and her mother-in-law was also outraged by her actions. It marked the beginning of the reign of terror for Surjit. To try and force her to adhere, physical force from both parties was used, even during the time she was expecting. Prompted by his jealous nature and insecurities, Sukhdev began to spy on his wife behind her back every time she went out with her friends. On the other hand, poor Surjit was craving companionship, respect and someone who would value and listen to her. She began to confide in a male colleague, formed a great friendship and later fell in love. It wasn't long until her husband found out about the affair and advised his family. When word of the family being aware of her affair, reached her ears, Surjit asked for a divorce. Not knowing a plan to get rid of her permanently was already in place. In December 1998, a family meeting was called. Surjit's mother-in-law and her husband explained how they had arranged Surjit's murder in India and that they would lure her by lying. Being in the dark and excited about the fake news of various family weddings, Surjit and Bachchan flew to Delhi in India on December 4th, 1998. That was the last time she was seen alive in the UK. Bachchan Kaur's brother, Darshan Singh, picked them up and drove them to the village of Punjabi, where the weddings were held. After that, Surjit went to a travel agent to secure an earlier flight back home, but was unable to do so. Neither did she get on the scheduled flight back on December 18th. She had vanished into thin air, and her body has never been found. Surjit did not get back onto her scheduled flight on December 18th, she had vanished into thin air and her body has never been found. When Surjit failed to return to the UK, friends and family members began to question her whereabouts. To cover their crime, Bachchan Kaur and Sukhdev claimed that she had fallen in love with someone in India and ran away with him. 
On one occasion, her evil husband had claimed to have spoken to her on the phone and that she had confirmed that she wasn't coming back. However, since lies are tricky to put up with, things began to prove shady. The stories were not matching up. As he had told someone else, she'd passed away. Despite receiving death threats to keep her quiet, Sarabjit, Surjit's sister-in-law, claims that she attempted to alert the authorities the day Surjit left for India by calling Crime Stoppers UK, but they never took her seriously. Sarabjit later said that after her mother-in-law had returned, she was told that her mother-in-law's brother drugged and strangled her to death and then threw her body on Ravi River. Angry about the confession, Sarabjit sent an anonymous letter to the police detailing everything and shared her concerns. This time, the police acted. In May 2000, Bachchan Kaur, Sukhdev Athwal and two other family members were arrested on conspiracy to murder but were released without charge. The evidence was deemed purely circumstantial. Following their discharge, Sarabjit's life was now in danger. She described the years following Surajit's disappearance as living in a constant climate of fear. Under the Athwal family, she tried many times to flee but kept failing. In 2004, Surabjit was taken to hospital with a life-threatening stress-related condition. Having the opportunity present itself, she welcomed it with open arms. When she left the hospital, she went straight back to her parents' home and told her father everything that had happened. Though scared to risk his daughter's life and the family at large, he felt doing the right thing was more important. He persuaded her to go back to the police and make a statement. As they expected, Sarabjit and her family were subjected to death threats and intimidation by the local Sikh community. In 2005, after Sarabjit had given a police statement, British authorities reopened the murder case. The investigation team travelled to India to interview the suspects mentioned in the letter and gather any evidence. While in India, they located the river where the body was believed to have been dumped, but they couldn't find it. Without the body, it wasn't easy to arrest and charge the culprits. After a long, complex and tiresome investigation, Butchan Kaur and her son Sukhdev were charged with murder in 2006. The trial began in spring of 2007. Sarabjit was the first person in history of British honour killing crimes to stand and testify against her own family.